Welcome to Raw Online. Today's topic of discussion is femoral triangle. The competency of this topic is describe boundaries, floor, roof and contents of femoral triangle and describe anatomical basis of psoas abscess and femoral hernia. Let us see what is femoral triangle. Femoral triangle is a triangular depression which is seen in the front of upper one third of the thigh just below the inguinal ligament. The other name of the femoral triangle is triangle of scarpa. So, the base of the triangle is located above that is by the inguinal ligament and the apex of the triangle is directed below. Let us see the boundaries of femoral triangle. So, this is the area for the femoral triangle. The lateral boundary is by the medial border of the sartorius muscle. So, this is the sartorius muscle which runs from the anterior superior iliac spine to the tibia. Okay. So, this is the sartorius. So, its medial border forms the lateral boundary of femoral triangle and the medial boundary is by the medial border of the adductor longus. So, adductor longus is a muscle of medial compartment. So, the medial boundary is by the medial border of adductor longus and the lateral boundary is by the medial border of sartorius. Then the base is formed by the inguinal ligament and the apex is formed by the meeting point of the sartorius muscle and the adductor longus muscle. So, this apex is continuous below with the adductor canal. Let us see the structures present in the roof. Just beneath the skin there is a superficial fascia, deep to that there is a deep fascia. Okay. In the superficial fascia, we can see the superficial group of lymph nodes. So, these are the, this green colored thing are the lymph node. So, the superficial group of lymph nodes are arranged in the horizontal direction just below the inguinal ligament is inguinal ligament as well as just lateral to the femoral vein. So, these are the horizontal group of lymph nodes just parallel to the inguinal ligament and the vertical group of lymph nodes lateral to the femoral vein. Okay. So, in the superficial fascia there is a superficial group of lymph nodes then there is a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Uh, Let us discuss this in the upcoming slides, then the branches of ilioinguinal nerve. Here near the more or less near the midline there is a ilioinguinal nerve and the superficial branches of femoral artery. So, already we know the superficial branches of the femoral artery are superficial external podental artery, superficial external podental artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery. and superficial epigastric artery. So, these are the branches of femoral arteries. The femoral artery is deep to the femoral sheath. From there the branches pierces and comes out in the superficial region. Okay. Once again I repeat the femoral artery is uh, within the femoral sheath. The superficial branches of the femoral artery are superficial external pudental artery, superficial epigastric artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery. Other than this the tributaries of femoral vein are superficial circumflex iliac vein, superficial so this indicates the superficial circumflex iliac vein and superficial epigastric vein and superficial external pudental vein. So, these are the some of the uh, tributaries of great saphenous vein and we can see the terminal part of the great saphenous vein also and in the deep fascia we can appreciate the uh, saphenous opening and the saphenous opening is closed by the cribriform fascia. Okay. So, these are the roof structures. In the roof we can appreciate uh, superficial group of lymph nodes, femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve and the superficial uh, branches of femoral artery and the tributaries of great saphenous vein as well as the femoral vein and the upper part of the great saphenous vein. The deep fascia has saphenous, saphenous opening which is closed by the cribriform fascia. Let us see the flow structures from lateral to medial. So, this is the lateral aspect and this is the medial aspect. So, the flow muscles are from lateral to medial, iliacus, psoas major, so, the star one is pectineus and most medially adductor longus. So, the floor of the triangle is mainly by the muscles. There are four muscles from lateral to medial, medial, iliacus, psoas major, pectineus and adductor longus. Okay. So, these are the floor muscles. 
let's see the uh, section at the level of the femoral triangle we can see the relations in this section feature so superficial to deep skin deep to the skin there is a superficial fascia in the superficial fascia we have seen the important structures what are present in the superficial fascia deep to the there is a fascia later within the fascia later we can appreciate the cribriform fascia this cribriform fascia which covers the which opening saphenous opening then the, these are the roof structures and coming to the flow structures flow from lateral to medial aspect we can appreciate the iliacus muscle then there is a tendon of soleus major then the pectineus and adductor longus so these are the flow structures so in between the iliopsoas that is between the iliacus and the tendon of the soleus major we can appreciate the femoral nerve so this is the iliacus and this is the tendon of soleus major in between we can appreciate the femoral nerve deep to that there is a capsule of hip joint okay so the structures present within the femoral triangle are especially the femoral vessels and the femoral nerve and uh, one group of lymph node that is the lymph node of clocket and a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve let's see the flow muscles one by one first we will see the iliacus and psoas major both together called uh, called as iliopsoas so the number one is the iliacus muscle and this one is the psoas major so the iliacus muscle the origin of the iliacus muscle is the upper part of the iliac fossa and this is the iliac crest this whole thing is the iliac crest so the inner lip of the iliac crest as well as the upper lateral surface that is the supralateral surface of the sacrum so the iliacus emerges from the iliac fossa the inner lip of iliac crest and the supralateral surface of the sacrum the soleus major is the a large muscle which emerges as a 14 slips from the bodies as well as the uh, intervertebral disc and adjoining transverse process of the vertebra that is from the t12 to l5 vertebra and the transverse process of l1 to l5 vertebra so this is the origin of soleus major muscle superficial to that we can see the soleus minor muscle leave this muscle now so the flow muscles of the femoral triangle are iliacus and the soleus major so the iliacus arises from the ilium and adjoining sacrum the soleus major is arises from the uh, lumbar as well as the t12 vertebra okay then the insertion both the muscle runs downwards and crosses the inguinal ligament that is runs deep to the inguinal ligament reaches this area this is the area for the femoral triangle and inserted in the lesser trochanter of the femur so this is the lesser trochanter of femur okay then the nerve supply of the iliopsoas is so the iliacus gets its nerve supply from the trunk of the femoral nerve so as major uh, gets direct branches from the l2 l3 and l4 so, so this is the lumbar plexus so the nerves emerging from this l2 l3 l4 especially femoral nerve runs within the substance of the psoas major so as well as direct branches from the lumbar plexus the action the iliacus is flexes and externally rotates the femur the psoas major is a broad muscle which connects the trunk that is the axial skeleton to the appendicular skeleton that is in the uh, femur so it acts from above it flexes the thigh as well as the hip joint while it acts from below it flexes the trunk so it is a flexor of thigh as well as the flexor of trunk and acting from below it raises the trunk from the recumbent to sitting position so this is the action about the psoas major and the psoas abscess in case of any uh, tuberculosis abscess tb abscess in the vertebra so the vertebra Uh, within the uh, within the vertebra in case of any abscess especially it is produced by the tuberculosis the abscess may passes through the psoas muscle and it reaches the femoral triangle so the uh, psoas muscle is covered by a fascia that fascia is the psoas fascia so the, within that fascia that abscess may extend in this picture also we can see the direction of the psoas abscess so the psoas abscess is present within the in the image we can appreciate the abscess the abscess may descend downwards up to the femoral triangle because of the attachment of this muscle it may extend into the thorax also because of the attachment of the psoas major there is a gap in the medial leave this so this uh, psoas abscess may extend into the thorax or it may extend into the femoral triangle okay so this is about the psoas abscess 
So let's see the other two floor muscles that is pectineus and adductor longus. Adductor longus is most medially. So this is adductor longus and this one is the pectineus muscle. So the origin of the pectineus is from the pectin pubis. So this is the area for the pectin pubis and the superior pubic ramus and it is inserted in the pectineal line of the femur. So here there is a pectineal line of the femur from the lesser trochanter. So this is the area for the lesser trochanter to the linea aspera. So this is the pectineal line of femur. Then the adductor longus. The adductor longus is arises from the anterior surface of the body of pubis. So this is the pubic bone. So this is the body of pubic bone, body of pubis. So the adductor longus is arises from the body of the pubis and the insertion is middle one third of this is the area for the linea aspera. So the adductor longus is inserted in the middle one third of linea aspera of femur. So that is about the origin and insertion of the pectineus and adductor longus. The nerve supply is for the pectineus the nerve supply is from the femoral nerve. So it is either directly from the trunk, trunk of the femoral nerve or from any one of its branch that is the nerve to pectineus. Additionally the pectineus also receives a branch from the obturator now. So the pectineus also receives a branch from the obturator now and the adductor longus receives a branch from the anterior division of obturator nerve. So this is the obturator nerve. So from its anterior division the adductor longus gets a branch okay. So the nerve supply for adductor longus is anterior division of obturator nerve. The pectineus is both femoral nerve as well as the obturator nerve. Action is both causes adduction of the. Let us see the contents. So flow muscles are over. The flow muscles are from lateral to medial iliacus tendon of psoas major, pectineus and adductor longus. Let us see the contents within the femoral triangle from medial to lateral. So this is the medial aspect and this is the lateral aspect. So from medial to lateral the contents are femoral vein. So number 1 is femoral vein and its tributaries. Then laterally femoral artery and its branches. Most laterally there is a femoral nerve and its branches. So these are the main contents other than this we can appreciate the femoral group of lymph nodes. The femoral group of lymph nodes are within the deep group of lymph nodes that is the deep group of inguinal group of lymph nodes and most laterally we can appreciate the lateral femoral cutaneous now. Okay. So most laterally lateral femoral cutaneous now of thigh. Over the artery there is a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Other than this some amount of fibro fatty tissue are present here. So the contents are once again I repeat femoral vein from medial to lateral femoral vein and its tributaries, femoral artery and its branches, femoral nerve and its branches and deep group of lymph nodes that is deep inguinal group of lymph nodes that is the femoral group of lymph nodes. Most laterally there is a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of thigh just above the femoral artery or within the femoral sheath there is a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and some amount of fibro fatty tissue. Let us see the contents one by one. First uh, we will see the branches and tributaries of vessels and the branches of nerves within the femoral triangle. So the artery. So the femoral artery is a continuation of external iliac artery. The branches of femoral artery within the triangle are, so this is the femoral artery, okay. So before in older days the femoral artery before giving branches it is called as common femoral artery. One of its deep branch is called as profunda femoris artery. So this common femoral artery is continuous as superficial femoral artery. So this one is superficial femoral artery. Nowadays these terms are obsolete. So only the femoral artery, 
So the femoral artery is a continuation of external iliac artery. And through uh, the adductor hiatus, it leaves as a popliteal artery. So this is the area of our adductor canal. From there it is continuous as popliteal artery. So this is the femoral artery. The branches of femoral artery within the femoral triangle are number one is this branch, this is the superficial external pudendal artery. So there are three branches, that is there are three superficial branches. One is superficial external pudendal artery. That is superficial to the spermatic cord. The next branch is superficial epigastric artery. So, the superficial epigastric artery runs towards the umbilicus or epigastric region. It runs in the anterior abdominal wall. The third branch is superficial circumflex iliac artery towards the anterior superior iliac spine. So, already we have seen these three superficial branch of femoral artery at the time of deep structures of front of thigh also. So, just take it as a revision. So, the femoral artery gives three superficial branches within the femoral triangle, superficial external pudendal artery, superficial epigastric artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery and the deep branch of the femoral artery within the femoral triangle are profunda femoris artery. Then there is a deep external pudendal artery that is deep to the spermatic cord and the muscular branches. So, these are the branches of femoral artery present within the femoral triangle, three superficial branch and three deep branch. So, then it uh, leaves the femoral triangle through the apex and it is continuous as a popliteal artery from the adductor hiatus. Then let us see the tributaries of femoral vein within the femoral triangle. So, the this is the external iliac vein. So, the femoral vein continuous as external iliac vein just medial to the meeting venal point ok. So, the tributaries of femoral vein present within the femoral triangle are the major big tributary is the great saphenous vein. Okay. So, the great saphenous vein receives the uh, tributaries accompanying the superficial branches of the femoral artery. Okay. Other than this profunda femoris vein. So, here somewhat deeper there is a profunda femoris vein. This vein is accompanying the profunda femoris artery. Then medial circumflex femoral vein, lateral circumflex femoral vein. So, in the medial aspect there is a medial circumflex femoral and laterally there is a lateral circumflex femoral vein other than this deep external pudendal vein. and muscular veins. So, these are the tributaries of femoral vein within the femoral triangle. Okay. So, one of the major tributaries great saphenous vein, the next one is profunda femoris vein. Other than this, the medial circumflex femoral vein, lateral circumflex femoral vein and the deep external pudendal vein and muscular veins. Let us see the branches of femoral nerve within the femoral triangle. So, the femoral nerve descends just deep to the inguinal ligament and reaches the femoral triangle. Okay. So, the femoral nerve is emerging from the lumbar plexus that is the dorsal division of ventral rami of L2, L3 and L4. It runs, it emerges in the lateral border of the psoas major. So, this is the, so this is the psoas major. It uh, formation is from the lumbar plexus. It runs within the substance of the psoas emerges in the lateral border, it reaches the femoral triangle deep to the inguinal ligament. Here you can appreciate the trunk of femoral nerve and it divides into anterior division and posterior division. So, this is the posterior division 
and this is the anterior division of femoral nerve. So, from the anterior division already we have seen it gives one cutaneous branch, one motor branch that is the nerve to sartorius. So, here we can we uh, cut uh, uh, this is the cut end of the sartorius muscle. So, the one motor branch is to the sartorius and two cutaneous branches are intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh, medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. So, the two sensory branch and one motor branch from the anterior division. So, around or uh, 2 millimeter it gives it divides into anterior and posterior division. From the posterior division one cutaneous branch that is the saphenous nerve and it gives motor branches to the quadriceps femoris. So, this is the these are the branches to the quadriceps femoris. So, these are the branches of femoral nerve within the femoral triangle. From the trunk it gives branch to the pectineus and the iliacus as well as articular branches to the hip joint. So, the branches of femoral nerve within the femoral triangle are from the trunk branch to pectineus, iliacus and articular branch. From the anterior division to the sartorius and two cutaneous branches, intermediate and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. From the posterior division, one cutaneous branch that is the saphenous nerve and the motor branches to the quadriceps. Let us see the femoral group of lymph nodes. So, the femoral group of lymph nodes are otherwise called as deep group of inguinal lymph nodes. There are around uh, three deep group of lymph nodes we can see here. So, one is present within the femoral canal, we will see what is femoral canal in the upcoming slides. So, the lymph node present within the femoral canal is known as lymph node of Cloquet. or the lymph node of Rosenmuller. Another lymph node is we can appreciate the junction between the femoral vein and the great saphenous vein and one more is present within the femoral ring. So, this is about the deep group of femoral lymph nodes. This group uh, receives lymphatics from the superficial group of lymph nodes that is the superficial group of lymph nodes finally terminates into the deep group of lymph nodes as well as the deep lymphatics and also it receives the lymphatics from the glands penis and the clitoris, glands penis and clitoris plus superficial group of lymph nodes. Finally, this group of lymph nodes draining into the external ilia group of lymph nodes. So, other structures within the femoral triangle are the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Can you see here? This lateral femoral cutaneous nerve also emerges from the lumbar plexus. It runs downwards over the substance over the uh, psoas major and reaches the femoral triangle in the most lateral aspect near the anterior superior iliac spine and it supplies the uh, strip of the skin over the lateral aspect of the front of thigh. The other branch is the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. So, genitofemoral uh, branch also a branch from the lumbar plexus. So, it again it is divided into genital branch and femoral branch. So, the femoral branch appears in the femoral triangle that is, so this is the femoral branch It is within the femoral artery in the same compartment with the femoral artery. Femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. So, these are the other structures present within the femoral triangle. Okay. Then uh, we have to know about the some of the important features that one is the femoral sheath. So, the femoral vessels are enclosed within the sheath. This she facial sheath, funnel shaped facial sheath is called as femoral sheath. This facial sheath enclosing the upper 3 or 4 centimeter of the femoral vessels. Okay. Proximally, the sheath is wider and opens into the abdominal cavity. So, here you can appreciate the femoral vein and the femoral artery. It is covered by a sheath. This sheath is called as femoral sheath. Proximally, it is wider and it is open into the abdominal cavity. Distally, it is narrower and blends with the tunica adventitia of the femoral vessels. Okay. Let us see the formation of the femoral sheath. So, this is the femoral artery. So, here this is the fascia transversalis. This fascia forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath. The fa uh, fascia transversalis forms the anterior wall of femoral sheath. 
So the fascia transversalis is nothing but a fascia which is present deep to the transverse abdominis muscle. So these are the anterior abdominal wall muscles. Deep to the transverse abdominis there is a fascia. This fascia is called as fascia transversalis and here like this there is a uh, near the iliac fossa, this is the iliacus muscle. Superficial to this, there is a fascia iliaca. This fascia iliaca forms the posterior wall of femoral sheath. So, the anterior wall is formed by fascia transversalis and the posterior wall is formed by fascia iliaca. So, before development of the femoral artery, here in the extra peritoneal connective tissue, there is an external iliac artery. So, this external iliac artery is deep to the fascia transversalis and superficial to the fascia iliaca. So, at the time of development after birth, with, uh, with the usage of the limb, there is a formation of the femoral sheath through the limbs or the, at the time of development of the limbs, there is a femoral artery. So, at the time of growth of the femoral artery, the femoral artery encloses the sheath uh, of the external iliac artery along with it around uh, 3 or 4 centimeter proximal uh, to the inguinal ligament. Okay. So, the anterior wall of the sheath is formed by fascia transversalis and the fascia, uh, posterior wall of the sheath is formed by fascia iliaca. So, in this picture also we can appreciate the femoral sheath. Okay. So, the fascia transversalis forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath. Posteriorly, there is a, this is the iliacus muscle. So, the fascia iliaca forms the posterior wall of the sheath. So, here once again, this is the great saphenous vein which pierces this fascia and terminates into the femoral vein. So, this is the area for the femoral sheath. So, the anterior wall of the femoral sheath is formed by fascia transversalis. And the posterior wall is by the fascia iliaca. So, the femoral nerve is deep to this fascia iliaca. So, it is not a content of the femoral sheath. It is one of the important point the femoral nerve is not a content of content within the femoral sheath because from the lumbar plexus the femoral nerve runs deep to the fascia iliaca so it lies lateral to the femoral sheath it is not within the femoral sheath. So, the lateral wall is somewhat vertical, it is pierced by the genital branch of genitofemoral nerve and the medial wall is slopes downwards and meets the lateral wall, here it is pierced by the great saphenous vein. So, the structures piercing the femoral sheath are laterally by the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and medially by the great saphenous vein. Other than this, the superficial branches of femoral artery, that is the superficial branches of femoral artery that is superficial circumflex iliac artery, superficial epigastric artery and superficial external pudendal artery. These also pierces the femoral sheath and comes out from the femoral artery. Let us see the compartments within the femoral sheath. The femoral sheath is divided into three compartments from medial to lateral. The intermediate compartment is occupied by the femoral vein. The lateral most compartment is by the femoral artery and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and the medial compartment is called as femoral canal. So, the compartmentalization of this femoral canal is done, uh, done by the uh, connective tissue septa that extending from the anteroposterior aspect within the femoral sheath. So, let us see the structures within each compartment. So, the medial compartment is somewhat empty. It is occupied by a lymph node of Clockett or lymph node of Rosenmuller plus some amount of fibro fatty tissue. And the intermediate compartment we can appreciate the femoral vein and the lateral most compartment is occupied by the femoral artery and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. So, this femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve at within the fascia iliaca, so it is accompanying the artery but please note there is no, that is the femoral nerve is not within the femoral sheath. Once again I repeat the femoral sheath is divided into three facial compartments by the anteroposterior connective tissue septa. The intermediate compartment is occupied by the femoral vein most laterally by the artery and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. Medial compartment is occupied by a lymph node as well as some amount of fibro fatty tissue. This lymph node is called as lymph node of Clockett. Okay. So, can you see the funnel shape femoral sheath? Uh, laterally it is uh, somewhat vertical and medially it is slopes and, and meets the lateral wall. Let us see what is femoral canal. The femoral canal is the medial most compartment of the femoral sheath. So, it is a short facial tube. It extends downwards as well as the width of its is diminishes downwards and closed inferiorly by the fusion of its walls. So, this is the femoral canal. The content of the femoral canal already we have seen some amount of fibro fatty tissue plus one lymph node. So, the lymph node present 
presented within the femoral canal is known as lymph node of Cloquet. It is otherwise called as lymph node of Rose and Muller or lacunar ligament. Okay. Then the relations of the femoral canal anteriorly we can appreciate the saphenous opening and posteriorly there is a pectineous muscle deep to it. So there is a fascia covering the pectineous forms the posterior relation and its main function is it provides a dead space for the expansion of the femoral vein at the time of increased venous return because it is occupied only by the fibro fatty tissue and sometimes there is a lymph node ok. So it provides extra dead space for the expansion of the vein. Let us see what is femoral ring. The proximal opening of the or the proximal end of the femoral canal is called as femoral ring. So, the femoral ring is nothing but the proximal end of femoral canal. It is it has a direct contact with the abdominal cavity. So, let us see the boundaries of femoral ring. Anteriorly it is anterior boundary by the inguinal ligament. Medially can you see this is the medial aspect and this is the lateral aspect. So, medially by the crescentic edge of the lacunar ligament anteriorly inguinal ligament medially the crescentic crescentic means like this semi lunar uh, edge of the lacunar ligament and posteriorly we can see can you see here this is the pectineus so the fascia covering the pectineus forms the posterior boundary laterally we can appreciate the femoral vein superiorly this ring is closed by a fibro fatty is, um, tissue that is known as femoral septum. So, the superiorly this opening is closed by the femoral septum. Once again I repeat the femoral ring is bounded anteriorly by the inguinal ligament ok anteriorly by the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament posteriorly by the pectineus and fascia covering the pectineus medially by the lacunar ligament and laterally by the femoral vein superiorly it is closed by a fibro fatty tissue it is called as femoral septum. So, the knowledge of the femoral ring is very very important it is larger and wider in females than males because the greater width of the pelvis of the females as well as the narrow diameter of the femoral vessels ok. So, it is very close to the anterior that is the anterior and the anterolateral boundaries of this femoral ring is related to the spermatic cord. Can you see male in male it is related to the spermatic cord in case of female it is related to the round ligament anteriorly and anterolaterally it is related to the inferior epigastric vessels ok. So, the anterior relation of this femoral ring is spermatic cord in case of males and round ligament of round ligament in females. Then the anterolateral boundary is the inferior epigastric vessels. Let us see the clinical anatomy. So, the one of the important clinical anatomy is the femoral hernia. So, the femoral hernia is nothing but a protrusion of the abdominal contents especially the coils of intestine through the femoral canal. So, this is the schematic diagram to show the femoral hernia ok. So, this is the hernial sac and this is the neck of the hernia. So, can you see here this is the area for the femoral ring. So, the femoral ring is the superiorly it is closed by a only a fibro fatty tissue or a connective tissue septa that is the femoral septum or uh, ok. So, it is a potentially weak site through this the abdominal contents can enter into the femoral triangle as a femoral hernia. So, initially it is a globular swelling it extend into the gro groin then through the saphenous opening it enters into the anterior abdominal wall ok as a retard shaped swelling ok. So, the location of the femoral hernia is infralateral to the pubic tubercle and below the inguinal ligament. It is very important to differentiate the inguinal ligament, inguinal hernia ok. So, the location of the femoral hernia is infralateral to the pubic tubercle and below the inguinal ligament it is very important it to differentiate it from the inguinal hernia. So, at the time of femoral hernia repair you should not injure the vessel. So, this is the area for the femoral canal. So, this orange uh, arrow indicates the femoral canal and yellow arrow can you see this artery this is the obturator artery. So, the obturator artery is usually not crosses this area that is the femoral canal but sometimes the obturator artery so this artery is called as aberrant obturator artery. It is emerges from the inferior epigastric vessels may cross this femoral canal. So, at the time of surgery of the femoral hernia you should not injure this ab aberrant obturator of artery if uh, you are damaging the, this artery it leads to a profuse bleeding, it leads to profuse bleeding. 
So, the knowledge of aberrant obturator artery is important at the time of femoral hernia repair. So, let us compare the femoral hernia with inguinal hernia. The femoral hernia we can see below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Inguinal hernia is above and middle to the pubic inguinal tubercle. The femoral hernia is below the skin crease that is inguinal skin crease. The inguinal hernia is above the skin crease. The femoral hernia is through the femoral ring, femoral canal, the protrusion of the contents. Okay. The inguinal hernia is protrusion of the contents through the inguinal canal. The main content is the momentum. Momentum is the one of the main content in case of femoral hernia, but the here it there is a contents of the intestine in inguinal hernia. There is a chances of strangulation. It is one of the important complication in case of all hernias. If you are not treating the femoral hernia within a time, it leads to a strangulation. But inguinal hernia, there is a less chance of strangulation. So, it is easily undergo strangulation. This, uh, so, the treatment of choice is surgery. But for inguinal hernia, we can manage it conservatively. So, it is common in females, it is common in, but the inguinal hernia is common in males. We have seen already why it is common in females because of the wider pelvis and narrow vessels. Okay. So, the knowledge of these two hernia is very, very important. So, this picture shows the site of femoral hernia that is below the inguinal ligament and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So, this picture shows the inguinal hernia. So, this is the indirect inguinal hernia and this is the direct inguinal hernia. So, summary of this class is about everything about the femoral triangle. So, it is a triangular space in the upper medial aspect of the thigh. It is bounded medially by the medial border of the adductor, longest laterally by the medial border of the sartorius, base is by the inguinal ligament, apex is the meeting point of these two muscles, roof is mainly by the skin, superficial fascia and the deep fascia and structures present within the fascia and floor is formed by four muscles from lateral to medial, iliacus, tendon of psoas major, pectineus and adductor longus. Okay, the contents are mainly vessels and nerves. The vessels are the femoral vein most medially and the femoral artery within the femoral sheath. Okay, and femoral canal it is occupied by the lymph node of clocket and most laterally by the femoral nerve. That is it is not within the femoral sheath lateral to the femoral artery and most laterally by the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of thigh as well as uh, superficial to the artery there is a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve. So, actually the superficial the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve lies here. Okay, this is not a correct one. So, the important questions in this region is femoral triangle and its boundaries, contents, everything you have to know about the boundaries. Okay, roof including floor and boundaries and contents in which the femoral vessels, nerves and its branches and tributaries and femoral sheath and its applied aspect especially the femoral hernia. So, the knowledge of femoral sheath is very very important or, uh, which layer forms the anterior wall and which one forms the posterior wall and the femoral canal, what is femoral canal and the structures present within the femoral canal and femoral ring and clinical anatomy related to femoral hernia. Let us discuss some MCQs. A 60 year old man with a thrombus within the femoral artery requires, requires a placement of an stent. During surgery, the likely finding regarding the femoral artery is, femoral artery is a continuation of common iliac artery. It lies outside the femoral sheath. Femoral nerve lies lateral to it, lies below midpoint of the inguinal ligament and pierces the adductor longus. The answer is femoral nerve lies lateral to it. So, this is the femoral sheath. Within the femoral sheath, we can see the femoral vein and the femoral artery, but the femoral nerve is lateral to the femoral artery okay so it is lateral to it is not within the sheath okay so the artery is within the sheath so it is not a correct answer it is a continuation of external iliac artery so this is also not a correct answer it lies below the midpoint of inguinal ligament it is lies uh, below the mid inguinal point and it pierces the adductor longus it is also a wrong answer so the correct answer is femoral now lies lateral to it then the femoral ring bounded by the following structures except femoral vein, lacunar ligament, superior ramus of pubis, femoral artery and inguinal ligament. Okay. So, the femoral vein forms the, so let us see the uh, boundaries within this picture. So, femoral artery is not a one of a boundary for the femoral canal. Okay. So, the medial boundary is the lacunar ligament, lateral boundary by the femoral vein and the posteriorly by the pectineus. So, here there is a superior pubic ramus, anteriorly there is a inguinal ligament. So, the answer is femoral artery. A femoral hernia descends through the femoral canal and the neck of the hernial sac lies at the saphenous opening above and middle to the pubic tubercle. 
below and lateral to the pubic tubercle in the obturator canal lateral to the iliacus muscle. The answer is it lies below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Actually the inguinal hernia lies above and middle to the femoral triangle. In this picture you can appreciate the location of the uh, femoral hernial sac and the inguinal hernial sac. So the femoral hernial sac is lies below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. The femoral ring is the opening in the deep face of the thigh for the great saphenous vein. The opening in the adductor magnus for femoral artery, the proximal opening of the femoral canal, the compartment of femoral sheath for femoral artery and the compartment of femoral sheath for femoral vein. Actually the opening in the deep face of the thigh for great saphenous vein is called as saphenous opening. So this is not a correct answer. And the opening in the adductor magnus for femoral artery is known as adductor hiatus. So this is also not a, this is also not a correct answer. And the proximal opening of the femoral canal is known as femoral ring. So this is the correct answer. And the compartment of femoral sheath to the femoral artery and the femoral nerve is not known as femoral ring. So this is the proximal opening of femoral canal. The proximal opening of femoral canal is known as femoral ring. The femoral hernia has characteristic features except it lies, it is more common in women than men. The swelling occurs below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. It descends through the femoral canal. The neck is related immediately lateral to the femoral artery. The neck is related medial to the sharp edge of inguinal ligament. So this one is correct. It is more common in women because of wider pelvis. It is below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. It descends through the femoral ring through which to the femoral canal. And the neck is related immediately lateral to the femoral artery. It is not a correct answer. The neck is related medial to the sharp edge of lacunar ligament is the correct answer. So the neck is related immediately lateral to the femoral artery is not a correct answer. Thank you.